little crystals. Each crystal held tiny droplets of water inside their shells. Over the 20 million years that these meteors fell, pools of water started to form on the cooling crust. I do tell, no water on our earth is billions of years old now you see, and may have traveled millions of miles to be consumed by you and me. Let's speed up hundreds of millions of years to find the earth covered in water with tiny islands peeking out while the core remain much hotter. This hot core pushes molten rock up and out the earth's new crust. When the lava cools it forms the land we know as it builds and thrusts. Over time these land masses start to collide and eventually form our continents we know today do still transform. Here's a theory of how the earth so scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity had played. How did Earth get its atmosphere we have today? There are three basic atmospheric hypotheses still used to this day. The first atmosphere was made up of hydrogen and helium gas. These molecules move so fast they escape Earth's gravity into space at last. The second was made of lots of volcanoes releasing water as steam and carbon dioxide, hydrogen, sulfate, ammonia, and methane science agreed. The third and current atmosphere is made up of this. You will see plants take in carbon dioxide and give up oxygen to you and me. All animals take in oxygen and give up CO2. Also volcanoes and burning stuff produces this like fossil fuels. We burn too many fossil fuels and have too many factory farms. All this carbon dioxide we produce is doing our earth harm. It's up to us to change the way we consume and create energy. If you start to make changes now our planet will change. You will see. Please do your part to save the earth to improve your future now. We're capable of change. Go make us all proud. Here's a theory of how the earth was formed. So scientists would say this interstellar journey will show you the role gravity you're so smart and important, so believe in what you can do. Make a change and set the stage in Earth's future for you. What makes the Earth shake? It's called an earthquake. Let's learn about the seismic waves that make the ground break. What makes the Earth shake? It's called an earthquake. The violent shaking along faults and tectonic plates. Millions of earthquakes happen on Earth each year. That's what the NEIC reports, but have no fear. About a half million are detectable, but most are so small. They can only be estimated because they can't be felt at all. Out of a half a million, only a hundred thousand are felt, it's true. And only a hundred out of that can cause damage that we can view. What is an earthquake and where can they be found? Most are found between tectonic plates between the ground. Seven major tectonic plates cover our earth, you see. These are the names of those plates and where they can be seen. This is the South American and Indo-Australian. The Antarctic plate and the African is great. Eurasian Pacific Plate in North American. We'll talk about minor plates in another lesson plan. There are three types of plate boundaries running between these tectonic plates. You will see divergent, convergent, and transform. They all cause earthquakes. Let's see how they perform. Divergent boundaries move away from each other, producing rip valleys. Most active between oceanic plates, yes, plates out in the sea. Convergent boundaries move towards one another and collide. That's where you'll find most earthquakes and volcanoes do reside. Transform boundaries are two plates that slide past one another. The San Andreas fault line's the best example of this to discover between these plate boundaries the earth moves inches each year but sometimes the plates get stuck that's where an earthquake does appear when pressure builds up from being stuck in this delay the rock breaks releasing energy causing seismic waves these seismic waves they shake the ground that is an earthquake
earthquake Let's see where massive quakes are found The most violent quakes happen in subduction zones No other That's where one tectonic plate is shoved beneath another One plate is forced down into the earth's mantle shown here The other plate's forced upwards That's where the violent quake appears This is the same type of earthquake that rocked Nepal in 2015 The Gorkha earthquake shook them all When a quake in a subduction zone happens on the ocean floor It can create a tsunami or tidal wave Let's learn some more A tsunami, also called a seismic sea wave Is a large volume of water displaced in an ocean or large lake The largest tsunami that was ever recorded was 1720 feet tall In Alaska, that's enormous What makes the earth shake? It's called an earthquake Let's learn about the seismic waves that make the ground break What makes the earth shake? It's called an earthquake The violent shaking along faults and tectonic plates Let's talk about the lithosphere And the seven major tectonic plates It's what shapes the face of the earth With volcanoes and earthquakes the lithosphere consists of the upper mantle and the crust They're part of the geosphere on Earth which makes these plates adjust Tectonic plates are irregularly shaped slabs of solid rock Composed of oceanic and continental lithosphere bedrock There are three tectonic boundaries running between tectonic plates Diverge, convergent, and transform now are those names just great? Divergent boundaries move away from each other and produce rip valleys Most active between oceanic plates, yes the plates out in the sea Convergent boundaries move toward one another and destructively collide That's where you'd find those earthquakes and volcanoes do reside Transform boundaries are two plates that slide past one another The San Andreas Fault lends the best example of this to discover Let's talk about the and the seven major tectonic plates It's what shapes the face of the earth With volcanoes and earthquakes Let's look at this topological map of the earth that we live on And the seven major tectonic plates we're learning in this song The biggest is the Pacific Plate It lies beneath the Pacific Ocean Nicknamed the Ring of Fire due to all the volcanic emotion the North American plate is the next on the list of major plates It includes both continental and oceanic crust I indicate Next we have the Eurasian plate, also a major tectonic grate Two large continents it includes are Europe and Asia today Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes Then the African is next it does straddle the vast equator most of africa's continents in it that's an easy way to locate her the antarctic plate is a medium size of the seven plates that are major it houses the continent of antarctica you'll hear as i banter the indo-australian plate is on the smaller side of the majors it's often considered two plates but as one it's definitely much greater South American plate is the smallest of the major plates you know That includes South America and Atlantic Ocean seabed below Let's Talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes Let's Talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes There are three kinds of rocks on earth you will see Igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary Our world is full of these rocks on land and in the sea Igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary I'm a main type of rock, my name is Igneous 
I am the first main type of rock of the three of us. Igneous rocks form when volcanic magma cools, either at the Earth's surface or inside Earth's crust high school. When magma cools slowly under Earth's surface, it's called intrusive igneous rock. It's worth knowing this. But when magma cools on the surface of the Earth, it's called extrusive igneous rock. Now let's move forth. Here are some examples of igneous rock, basalt, rhyolite, and obsidian. We don't really talk. Igneous rock makes up 95% of the Earth's surface. This says Ben time well spent. I'm a type of rock called sedimentary. Let's break down the meaning of my name to learn about me. Sediment, small particles of sand or organic material that settle at the bottom of water or land as gravity pulls. Sedimentary rock forms when sediment builds up over time. It's compressed into layers, forming rocks till their prime. You can find lots of fossils in sedimentary rock. When plant and animal remains are squished in layers in which we had just talked. Here are some examples of the rock called sedimentary. Limestone, sandstone, and shale are three you can now see. I'm a type of rock called metamorphic. I am one of the main types of rock to be more specific. Metamorphosis means to change and I'm transformed by heat and pressure from existing rocks. Here is more about me. Any type of rock can become metamorphic when transformed by extreme heat and pressure like this metamorphic rocks form deep within the earth's crust where temperatures and pressures are high it's a must here are some examples of metamorphic rock i'll show lapis lazuli schist and beautiful marble there are three kinds of rocks on earth you will see igneous metamorphic and sedimentary our world is full of these rocks on land and in the sea igneous metamorphic and sedimentary Tornadoes are rapidly rotating columns of air that form inside supercell storms with you this I will share When they connect with the ground as a funnel of cloud They are officially tornadoes of which I am very proud Tornadoes begin with a powerful thunderstorm I tell These thunderstorms are not normal they are called supercells Supercell thunderstorms reach up to 50,000 feet in height Bringing high force winds, giant hailstones and great flowers Flashes of lightning so bright Supercells are great at causing tornadoes Under specific conditions I'll explain the recipe for a tornado This is my mission Rising air is the first ingredient needed To form a tornado Let's take a look, I will explain how it develops In this show Condensation releases heat This heat becomes the energy That drives huge upward drafts of air That start the formation of me The more condensation and the bigger Storm clouds grow, the more power Powerful, those updrafts become this is something you should know in supercells as rising air mass is really strong you see as air climbs it can change direction and start to move more quickly if there's a lot of moisture a huge cloud base develops it's bizarre giving the tornado something to feed up if it gets that far when all of these things are in place a vortex develops I assure it forms a wide tall tube of spinning air that gets pulled upwards this is called the mesocyclone which is what you're seeing here but to become a tornado it has to touch the earth down there outside cool dry sinking air starts to wrap around the back of this mesocyclone forming a rear flank down draft from above this scenario creates a temperature difference between the air inside the mesocyclone and the air outside you see this builds a level of instability that allows tornadoes to thrive then the lower part becomes tighter increasing when speeds it drives this funnel air moves down into that large moist cloud base at the bottom of the storm It sucks it in and turns it into a rotating cloud that is formed This forms a link between the storm that created me and the earth When that spinning cloud touches the earth it becomes a tornado's birth Tornadoes are rapidly rotating columns of air that form in 
inside supercell storms with you this I will share when they connect with the ground as a funnel of cloud they are officially tornadoes of which I am very proud most tornadoes don't live long and only have some power this produces winds between 65 and 110 miles per hour some others last over an hour and are much stronger than these produce a destructive 200 mile per hour wind when tornadoes are the When the temperature difference we discuss does disappear to none Or when the moisture in the air dries up the storm loses momentum And it pulls a tornado back inside then it's done Tornadoes are rapidly rotating columns of air that form inside supercell storms with you this I will share When they connect with the ground as a funnel of cloud They are officially tornadoes of which I am very proud this is a plant's life cycle brought to you by a seed We'll learn about the distinct stages that any plant needs Let's explore vascular plants or tracheophyta Let's plant this seed of knowledge in which I will teach ya What's a vascular plant? Well it's any plant That contain vascular tissue, xylem and flow of my chant Let's look at the vascular tissue called xylem their tubes that act like straws pulling nutrients and water up from roots they run And the vascular tissue called phloem is this Thin tubes that transport the sugar sucrose produced by photosynthesis These vascular tissues are similar to your veins Transporting water, minerals, and sugars through your body, it's the same A seed's an embryonic plant enclosed in a protective outer shell There are three parts of the seed of which I'm about to tell There's the seed coat, the embryo or tiny plant, and the endosperm which is the food for the embryo I chant. The seed coat protects the seed from any physical harm you know, and from temperature change or water damage so it can grow. The seed coat also keeps the seed dormant like it's in a deep sleep, by not letting the embryo have access to water or air isn't that neat. When the seed coat senses it's in the right place to grow, like deep down in nutrient rich soil it lets the embryo know. The embryo is now ready to start to grow, this process is called germination in which I will show. When the seed coat lets some water through to the embryo, the embryo will feed off the endosperm until leaves start to grow. The embryo will keep drinking water until the seed coat does split and the first thing that sticks out is a root reaching down quite a bit. A seed always knows what is up and what is down so it can be sure to send its root system straight down through the ground. The roots keep moving down so Searching for more water and nutrients as shown They're sucked up through the xylem to feed the embryo so it can grow When the roots are deep enough a shoot breaks out the other side Reaching up through the rough dirt to send its new leaves towards the sky This new sprout doesn't need to feed off the endosperm anymore Because now it can create its own food from the sunlight I adore This process of creating food is called photosynthesis Watch a kids learning to video on the subject to learn more about this photosynthesis is a process of using sunlight to synthesize foods from the water in carbon dioxide this sugar food is called glucose and fructose which are both converted by the plant into a sugary sucrose the sucrose is the food that helps the plant grow and thrive which is transferred through the flow I'm sap through the plant it does dive when a plant becomes in adult plant it wants to reproduce and create more baby plants with a seed or from fruits first the plant must pollinate it's no enigma bringing pollen grains from the male anther to the female stigma the plant needs a pollinator like an animal or wind in order for the pollinator
combination and seed production to begin when a pollen grain from the anther containing a nuclei reaches the stigma of a flower from the bee passing by the nuclei runs down the style in the pollen tube till it reaches the ovule of the flower to the egg it pursues a nuclei fuses with the ovule creating a new seed which will fall to the ground starting a new plant cycle and a tree the goal of every plant and of every living thing is to create offspring for the next generation life's a beautiful thing this is a plant's life cycle brought to you by a seed we'll learn about the distinct stages that any plant needs let's explore vascular plants or tracheophyta let's plant this seed of knowledge in which i will teach you Let's gain a high level of knowledge About the types of clouds that we know of now We'll gain a high level of knowledge There are high, middle, and low clouds in which I'm proud There are three levels of clouds in which we will explore High level, mid level, and low level of course The typical high level clouds they are first There are three we will learn within this song verse. Cirrus is a genus of atmospheric cloud generally characterized by thin wispy strands I teach out loud. A cirrus cloud can form at any altitude between 16,500 and 45,000 feet it's true. Cirrocumulus clouds are small rounded puffs that usually appear in long rows high in the sky this much is clear. Cirrocumulus usually form between an altitude of 16,000 and 45,000 feet this is so true. Cirrostratus is a high level, very thin, generally uniform, semi translucent type of cloud in high altitude it'll form. Moving on to mid level clouds, they usually form between 6,500 and 20,000 feet, is the norm. They typically form at temperatures between 0 and negative 40 Celsius. I hope that you know what I mean. Alto cumulus is the first mid level cloud. They appear like globular masses and layers or patches so proud. Alto stratus form between 6,500 and 20,000 feet, generally uniform gray to bluish green layer or sheet. Nimbo stratus is a multi-level, often dark, nearly uniform cloud, producing rain, snow, or sleet with no lightning or thunder pow. On to low level clouds that usually form below 6,500 feet and there is more you should know. These consist of liquid water or even super cool droplets, except during cold winter storms when ice crystals within the cloud set. Cumulus clouds have flat bases and are often described as puffy, cotton-like, and fluffy in appearance. That's so rad. Cumulonimbus is a dense towering vertical cloud forming from water vapor carried by powerful upward air currents I'm informing. Stratocumulus forms in large dark rounded masses, usually in groups, lines, or waves in the low level cloud classes. Stratus clouds form with horizontal layering with the uniform base, as opposed to convective clouds that form by rising thermals that race. Here's three levels of clouds with each type in mass. Thank you for joining this kids learning tube class. Let's gain a high level of knowledge about the types of clouds that we know of now. We'll gain a high level of knowledge. There are high, middle, and low clouds in which I'm proud. Don't forget. Did you know without oxygen you wouldn't survive in this world we live in? And did you know that all of the trees produce our oxygen it's expelled from their leaves photosynthesis is the subject this song is about it's a chemical reaction in plants we can't live without many people don't see trees and plants for what they really do and so they don't respect the life balance the trees provide for you plants have chlorophyll it's the green pigment you see it allows sunlight to 
that all of the trees produce oxygen it's expelled from their leaves when plants are Listen well, I 
always share. Thanks. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. The lithosphere consists of the upper mantle and the crust. They're part of the geosphere on Earth, which makes these plates adjust. Tectonic plates are irregularly shaped slabs of solid rock, composed of oceanic and continental lithosphere bedrock. There are three tectonic boundaries running between tectonic plates. Diverge, convergent, and transform. Now aren't those names just great? Divergent boundaries move away from each other and produce rip valleys. Most active between oceanic plates, yes, the plates out in the sea. Convergent boundaries move toward one another and destructively collide. That's where you'd find those earthquakes and volcanoes do reside. Transform boundaries are two plates that slide past one another. The San Andreas Fault lends the best example of this to discover. Let's talk about the and the seven major tectonic plates It's what shapes the face of the earth With volcanoes and earthquakes Let's look at this topological map of the earth that we live on In the seven major tectonic plates we're learning in this song The biggest is the Pacific Plate It lies beneath the Pacific Ocean Nicknamed the Ring of Fire due to all the volcanic emotion the North American plate is the next on the list of major plates. It includes both continental and oceanic crust I indicate. Next we have the Eurasian plate, also a major tectonic grade. Two large continents it includes are Europe and Asia today. Let's talk about the lithosphere and the seven major tectonic plates. It's what shapes the face of the earth with volcanoes and earthquakes. Then the Straddle the vast equator Most of Africa's continents in it That's an easy way to locate her The Antarctic plate is a medium size Of the seven plates that are major It houses the continent of Antarctica You'll hear as I banter The Indo-Australian plate Is on the smaller side of the majors It's often considered two plates But as one it's definitely much greater The South American plate is the smallest of the majors Until a different outside force makes an 
infinity connection That's Newton's first law of motion The second law will come after you sing this chorus and it is done I'm Isaac Newton, I discovered the laws of gravity and motion The three laws of motion that I'd like to teach you You'll be surprised by how many that you already knew it's a physics revolution The second law of motion Sometimes called the law of dynamics We'll learn the second law now Before your teacher gets frantic The second law is a relationship Between an object's mass It's acceleration and the applied force Is the last If you want the mass of a football to accelerate You need the force of the kick From your foot at a fast rate But if the mass that you're moving Is greater than the force applied The acceleration will be less but at least you try Newton's third law of motion is a great attraction for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction this is Newton's cradle the mass and all these spheres are the same to show an action with an equal and opposite reaction is my aim when we let the first sphere go its mass times velocity barge when it impacts the next sphere the momentum transfer takes charge momentum's passed through the middle spheres and passed on to the final have the same mass and their velocity is equal to the first sphere that impacted the middle three spheres this is known as elastic collision there's no loss in kinetic energy here so for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction this newton's cradle does define this action i'm isaac newton i discovered the laws of gravity and motion the three laws of motion that i'd like to teach you you'll be surprised by how many that you already knew it's a physics revolution